Good evening, everybody, and good morning to the uh, to our friends who've joined in from the U.S. And welcome you all to this wonderful Power Pack session on how to create a successful data archiving solution strategy for your Salesforce organization. I am joined here uh, along with Priya Ranjan Panigrahi, and my name is Arnav Roy. I will be your moderator for the day. And after the session is over, we will be taking a few of your questions. So feel free to ask whatever you think is important uh, and connected to this session. Uh, to begin with, let me introduce myself. Uh, I am I'm, I'm a part of the uh, global strategy for the Data Archive, our team, and I manage the, the entire global partnership too. And along with me is Priya, who is the co-founder of a co-founder and the chief architect of Data Archive. Uh, Priya, could you like to introduce yourself, please? Uh, sure. Thank, uh, thank you, Arnab. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. And uh, thank you very much for joining in. And I would like to take your 30 minutes of precious time uh, uh, today and to talk about uh, and to learn something about uh, what are the data archival strategies normally enterprises uh, uh, they adopt or uh, they should look for. And uh, me, myself, having given you know, 15 years or experience uh, in the Salesforce technology from last 2004 and 5, I started uh, learning Salesforce. Uh, and since then that we are working on the Salesforce technology and uh, uh, yeah, the, I think uh, that's it. Yeah, uh, so Priya, before we begin, I would like our audience to know this, that uh, this is for a pure educational purpose and is not for anything of influencing you on your buying decision for any archival solution. So this is purely for educational purpose, guys. With that, let's begin the session. Uh, great. So if you look at that one, so you know, on a, let's let's clear some of meat that we have. Uh, you know, like uh, when we talk about the customers uh, that we almost uh, worked with uh, 100, 200 customers uh, so far with the small, medium, and enterprise. Uh, and there's always a you know a myth: what is backup and what is archive? And we, uh, you know, like uh, sometimes though we don't feel tired, but we sometimes we feel that. There is a very thin line difference between the backup and archive, and that's something. Backup is all about copy paste, right? You have a record, let's say account record, and you can create a multiple version of the same record into the backup. But in case of archive, it's kind of a cut paste. That means you are moving the data, you are deleting from your source and putting into the destination. That's called archive here. And and there are various purposes that backup and archive being used, and our backup can be used for accidental data loss and disaster recovery purpose. But archive can be used for your storage cost, your compliance and application performance, or in analytics as well. So that's what we wanted to clear before we moving to the entire insight to the archive. Fantastic information, Priya, because the other day I was speaking to one of our clients and they had this confusion that should they go ahead and back up the data or archive it. But now that you've cleared it, I'm sure this is going to make a lot of sense to them. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Arnab. So let's talk about a little bit of data archiving industry. Right, and because the data is the new oil for every business now on, right? So the guy who are getting more data, and they know that how to play around, how to make the business uh, from the existing data itself, right? And that is where you can look at the IDC report. Uh, that's where the data is growing in the 2020, 20 or 2020, 25, and that's where like you know like a seven. But here, one of the figures that we're trying to show it here, the 70% of your business data is potentially archivable in any business. Now, let me put up in some example over here, right? Let's say your sales executive dealing with a lead and then your product that you are selling, it's a long cycle product and four months or five months you are dealing with and there's a lot of emails, activities and tasks and events being created. You are meeting and updating the lot of data with the chatter data, file data or whatever, or all lot of information. Unfortunately, you lost the lead. And right now, and you have a lot of data that you are, and you have no idea that how much data that has been generated last four months of interaction over here. But this data, I do understand the lead might give you another business in future, the lead data you don't want to archive it. But there are a lot of other data which is just showing and some of the hidden data which is taking your data storage, that can be potentially can archivable. That is what the industry study shows that the 70% of data could have potentially archive by any business. You talk about healthcare, you talk about uh, you know the finance, you talk about HR, you talk about professional services, any business. 
and uh, yeah the bunch of other uh, figures that you can see that one but this is something i wanted to highlight here fantastic you know and it is so important for businesses priya that today that they retain their data because for future use you never know where you're going to be using this let me share another interesting fact priya the fact is that do you know that in the past decade the amount of data that has been generated is actually the amount of data that we have created in this world in the last 2 years alone that's right yeah yeah and you know like that's what the 60% in the the next figure shows that 60% of the companies are planning to spend on the data archive solution in 2018 itself that means they know that they don't want to delete the data they don't want to mess up the data they want to keep the data they want to get analyze the data that they are having it how they can get more business in the same data so yeah that's an cool uh, you know figure that we got from that uh, industry experts no wonder priya you call this a new oil yeah so let's go in, in before going inside to the data archiving let's understand what are the type of data archiving why you need a data archiving solution now a business and as well as a technical team or operation team need to understand that whether it's required for compliance or for historical archiving or for analytical archive or mix of all of them and uh, you know like uh, uh, any two of them if this could be that your case then of course you need a data archiving solution and before going that you need to understand it might not be today it is for historical archiving but it probably tomorrow going to be analytical archiving and no business is going to be you know like uh, going to be accept changing of this kind of software very frequently right so choosing a vendor and strategizing initially before it might take some time initially but it should not be a you know tactical decision immediately to save something rather it should be a strategic decision for in the future of the next 5 years what sort of data archiving solution that you need to choose which can support to mix up all of them yeah and you know priya the, the most important and well known fact is that the us government actually regulates that you need to maintain 7 years of your historical data before you can delete yeah not only us government if you look at the financial uh, industry or the healthcare industry technically every industry it is one called a regulatory but the data is required if you look at that every data that i search in google that google store somewhere and you know how much they make money about that uh, analyzing the data and doing that absolutely right? priya absolutely so and if if you look at that let's talk about something about sales for data archiving because the session is all about that sales for data archiving strategies so where this data comes from actually and if you look at that uh, whatever the application you choose either sales cloud or service cloud or financial cloud or health cloud ultimately the data is being stored in this object or a custom object or standard object in salesforce we call but for anybody who are not familiar with salesforce it is nothing but a table or schema entity in your relational database that's where the data stored at rest now the data generated with each and every activity a system is doing right? it could be like you know you send one email you create one task you discuss with something through the chatter or you can you know like uh, you create the invoice and invoice line item the lead the campaigns that you run through everywhere the data get created even in the paradox the marketing cloud that also create a lot of data into that one and salesforce record calculates each record has on an average 2 kb of data storage whereas uh, email messages are calculated exactly the same size of your email messages so email messages could be one email message could be 1 mb now think about how much mb are because of the data storage the customer or the sales guy is going to be send only two liner email for that one to the, to their customer to close the deal <laughs> might not be they are not looking into that but a admin or a business or a operation team supposed to take a call that how much data that generating how much uh, they need to understand that part and absolutely and business is always concerned about cost as one of their primary reasons to make sure that archiving becomes their primary way of storing data yeah and, and the cost they would love to invest that if there is a return out of that absolutely. right and if all the, otherwise there will always do a cost to try to if there is any other way that cost can be saved so that it can put it into somewhere else to generate some more revenue right absolutely. and these are the challenges if you look at that the data archiving has this you no know, high storage cost the application performance is at stake you know your data security is could be an issue the scalability right the relational database system uh, you know or you know whatever the storage that you choose the security is or the scalability is more important here apart from the compliance governance of course that is a major factor in across enterprise absolutely true priya about that okay so now you know priya let me talk to you about something about you know the sales for data archiving different options that are available for businesses today the one that comes up is on premise you would also have something called a cloud solution 
and then of course there is something called a native solution the on premise is a solution where it's quite expensive because you will have to actually have the hardware within your your whole uh, organization whereas cloud solution is a solution where you could store your data in another place but it leaves your salesforce ohana right right and whereas when it comes to native solution then this your data stays within your salesforce universe so uh, can you, could you let us know a little more about the native solutions uh, possibilities, uh, Priya? Yeah, because when, when you say cloud solution, if somebody has already been a little scared about, uh, you know, uh, putting the data into the one cloud system, now they, if they choose for another cloud system, it's a double headache, right? Absolutely. Now, how this, uh, now you need to understand the credibility of the vendor that who deals with the data, where they store, what sort of certification and a compliance process and the policy, do they care about the GDPR and SOC or HIPAA and all that compliance related stuff? What kind of disaster recovery and high availability that they made their infrastructure and everything that? And who was the other place that using it that is also making more sense here in the cloud solution? But when you talk about on premises, yes, we do already have an archival strategy. You are dealing with the data warehouse and you are using it. It makes sense sometimes to go into that one, though there is a lot of other hurdles you need to deal with. If at all you are dealing with the Salesforce application, but if you have any other application which is internally built application running intranet, then it makes sense to do that one. But in terms of a native solution, of course, your native solution gives you the freedom of data, no data security. I mean, like a security would not be any challenge because the same vendor, same cloud system of the data center takes care of your data security, data accessibility, and even the scalability point of view, everything has been taken care by that. And not the amount of data it grows. That is what that big industry experts, what they said about the relational database is not enough to handle your archive data in the future. So the only solution with going to the big data, and that is where the big data comes from the picture in the industry. So uh, when you're talking about big data, uh, Priya, what are the options for big data on the native platform? Yeah, that's like, you know, I would like to talk, thank you to the Salesforce, uh, the amount of uh, innovation they put into the the whole thing right like uh, that's what their innovation the company from uh, you know from series of years uh, past series of years and we proud to be in uh, one of the partner of the salesforce and part of the ohana absolutely so uh, the big object is the new offering by salesforce and as you can look at in the uh, screen right now this is the screen has been taken from your salesforce that means uh, even after this meeting you can go back and log in either to your developer org or your uh, uh, you know sandbox org or even your uh, which are in a production or you would see that there is another or alternative data storage system has been introduced by you know salesforce that's called big object storage and the big object name comes from you know like uh, it's kind of a big salesforce always refer that object custom object because it's a big data based solution that's what they call a big object Fantastic. and in a custom object ends with underscore underscore c that's the nomenclature they use right. in case of big object it ends with underscore underscore b Wow. So uh, good, good to know that. Absolutely. So now, and the, and if you look at this other image, a small tiny image, which has been highlighted that the big object created only for the purpose of the archival data and storing a large data set over here. Right. So uh, Priya, this comes by default for all users when they start off with? That is correct. It, it, it does not come with all, of course it's all users. It's an organization offering. It's not a user based offering. Right. Normally user license, you will get a data storage limit or a file storage limit for each user license and what type of editions that you use. But the big object does not fall into that category. It comes with 1 million free as a trial that would given to every customer. And after that, they can go and purchase more big object lot from the Salesforce and you need to interact with the Salesforce account executive to get that. And you buy it in blocks. Is, is exactly. You can buy it in blocks. You have a billion record you require for 100 GB or 500 GB or one terabyte of data. Uh, you can even purchase that because big object known for taking a massive data, billions and trillions of record and it could be go to jettabyte, petabyte of data that it can handle without having any performance issue. So uh, Priya, let me ask you this. So if I need to compare between my storage space in my, on my Salesforce org with the big object, right? Uh, what kind of pricing or what kind of comparison can I see? Now, if, before going to the pricing, I just wanted to talk about the big object capability sure. over here. Is on, this is the future storage and Salesforce being used. It's not like new to given to customer right now. Salesforce been used from last uh, decade to storing the data of your file archive data, the log event data, 
everything that Salesforce internally uses. And this has been said that uh, Salesforce something it uses internally and it has been successfully, you know, uh, uh, you know, successfully implemented and they are using it. That's what they make it a platform offerings and giving to the customers to start using the similar stuff to their, uh, you know, like uh, to the to the uh, you know customers and the partners. How cool is that? Exactly. And uh, this by default support that, you know, like uh, out of the box analytics and the prediction, it's the Einstein analytics and prediction. Fantastic. And you can even write the same SQL that whatever the how you get your lead data account data, it is so easy to get the data from the big object as well. And the scalable, as I said, it's a no limit. And of course, the cost effective, as you asked, I wanted to take to the next slide and talk about that. And this cost effective is not like little, I know it's kind of massive. I mean, if you look at that, uh, if somebody is planning for like a 50 million of data record, they wanted to archive it. And uh, with that would be equivalent to data storage would be costing about 300,000 US dollar. But now the big object comes with uh, you know $1,000 per month, which is $12,000 per year. And that's near about 95% of saving in the past year. And if you look at the right figure here in the next five years, uh, they will be making a close to 1 million saving right over in the data storage solution itself. These are mind-boggling numbers, Priya. I mean, I mean, the kind of savings companies can look from the uh, use of big object is simply mind-blowing. Really, really good information to share. Yeah. So, yeah, I, apart from that big object storage, let's talk about that. Uh, let's talk about the main part of our uh, the event, uh, which is uh, how much, uh, like, what is the strategy a business supposed to take it? What business should look into that before they select one any archiving software or solution, right? They should look in the data residency, right? Where the data stores, where the data lives, who is taking care of the data, who is seeing the data, who, what, when, everything to be checked because you are moving the data. If you are keeping the native, probably you have the, all the answers, you no need to worry. The data retention, who can keep the data, you know, like as, like a, as much, you know, time that you want for, right? Or uh, that's what the data retention is supposed to be that uh, one of the factor that uh, enterprise supposed to look into cost of course a cost one and i do have another slide uh, that uh, you know what kind of different cost that you're supposed to look into and it is going to play a very big role before choosing any data archive uh, solution report and analytics as i said if you are looking for analytic purpose of the uh, data archiving of course uh, how easy how cool how integrated that it can connect to any reporting and analytics tool and where you can directly get it in stop of paying more and uh, developing some in-house and paying more to the software center uh, getting these things. Accessibility, of course, business is not going to be agree that, okay, you have saved my storage cost and you are moving your data, but when I want it, I don't get it. So they need immediately same way the data is coming. It has to be come out in the same way and that's what the sort of instant accessibility irrespective of where the data being stored, right? The security audit compliance, the policy driven archiving and the application switching. That's what uh, I, uh, I wanted to, you know, highlight this. Uh, you need to check that what sort of applications that we choose, what happened tomorrow, you need to switch to another archival solution because it might fit to your coming year or and it's enough money has been already been spent. But, uh, you know, somehow something you want to switch to another archival solution. And is that so easy? And that's what something you need to check. But otherwise, you need to end up paying a lot of money into that uh, to unlocking that application or unplugging that application. Absolutely, clear. And now, apart from that one, your, how implementation is going to be difficult, right? To manage, to knowing the Salesforce system, which is very complex system, the how implementation is going to be the initial migration, right? Whenever you choose any archiving strategy, of course, a business need an archiving solution, not from the day one. When they realize that the data is getting a massive right now, let's plan for an archiving strategy. And that's where we, when I purchase a laptop, I don't need an external hard drive. When my laptop is being filled with a lot of documents, files and my photos and everything, that's where I think about either putting in the cloud or buying an external hard drive. So that's what a migration. So I need to do a migration and how migration is completely difficult, how it is easy that you need to understand that it's a separate cost or not. You need to take care of, you need to check that before, uh, taking any decision. Performance, uh, bulk archive and restore option, you know, automatic uh, archiving option, or it could be integration to any other archival or uh, your industry standard or co corporate uh, strategical archiving software supposed to be also integrated with that one is supposed to be there. Absolutely. And you know, Bria, 
this on demand support is something that businesses have always been concerned about because without that it becomes very difficult for them to have the kind of trust factor to be built for their data going out of the system or being archived right so the reason why it is required a support you are not dealing with a lead scoring here you are not dealing with the top of the analytics solution over here and sometimes the application is not there and tomorrow you might get the lead score calculation is different let's go and change the formula field or value and the calculations and you can get it now once a data gets screwed up and the data get missed out data is not properly archived and the relationship has been screwed up then it is going to be a huge loss is that your vendor is taking care of that is that been properly tested in your sandbox and developer before knowing that one so that's what i would say in enterprise this if they really care about the data they're supposed to have a on demand 24 by 7 support from every vendor who support and you need to understand get the reference check what they have done and then they should go with that vendor selection absolutely priya and you won't believe the amount of calls that i have had with customers where they have been constantly putting emphasis on the fact that is your is a product there which has got on demand support and this is such a important slide priya that is correct so apart from business so let me talk about a few of them on a technical there are many actually but let's talk about a few of the technical perspective that a technical chief architect or somebody supposed to take care of that before they choose this one right that sales post system is a completely end full you know like if you look at the relationship wise and that relationship uh, which is uh, take care of the complex relationship they supposed to support the lightning as well as the classic that that and the file and attachment is supposed to be supported and now they have to integration support it's not like 95% of the enterprise they use the app exchange apps for other purpose right so now is that the same solution is going to support if they are going to install any other external apps into their system and now this is one of the part is like platform governor limit check because sometimes a enterprise select applications because the ui looks great the price is great because the company has a brand right and because they have done some other product in you know and they have a success story on the other product but now whether this product is going to help you to check the limitation check sometimes a memory leakage it could be api usage it could be file size it could be any other there could be 52 governor checks supposed to be happen with your large volume of data that when you are talking about uh, the archive guys don't worry about you know the, i know there are a lot of information being shared today with you all within a 30 minutes time frame but don't worry we will be sharing the ppt along with the recording of this for your convenience so don't worry about it at all yeah and then as you asked about on uh, like the cost part the cost is Absolutely. not only the one part right and it could be software cost it could be infrastructure cost but of course the software infrastructure cost always comes when you are choosing a cloud or, or sorry the on premise stuff but when you look for the license software license cost renewal cost upgrade cost the cloud player also going to charge for that one and but in case of only a license native application app exchange apps probably it is only the the per user per month whatever the charge normal subscription charge they charge apart from the support and maintenance how much is the initial data migration training or integration and implementation cost and so this cannot be ignored absolutely priya and the most important part is that you know it is important to be wise and you need to see all the aspects before you take a decision on archiving that is correct so now we do have one appendix over here also which we try to differentiate that native versus on premises with the public cloud where who is the alignment with the salesforce road map and which are the performance and high availability what are the scalability part what are the implementation times in days and months and that you need to choose uh, the enterprise or the business has to choose wisely before choosing an any uh, you know like any uh, archiving solution yeah so priya how easy is it to you know access a big object and you know access in big object is pretty pretty easy as i said salesforce has already been enabled that there's a lot of videos and webinars that we do we also do a lot of uh, a uh, demo training on the big object as well and we are planning to have an power of big object in another demo in coming in Absolutely. the coming months uh, big object access is very easy because as i said if somebody knows custom object they can do also big object yes there are little hiccups that uh, there is no ui for big object to do but somebody who know the api and all that that can do but big said that uh, that the you know like the the application that you were talking about here which is like data archive application that you were talking about here which takes care all your pain sticking jobs it automatically convert uh, from your object to big object uh, and where admin has to no need to do anything it's an admin friendly it's just a couple of clicks that uh, your big object uh, automatically get created by the system itself fantastic and priya one question i had is that you know what about encryption is does big object allow you encryption 
uh, you know, like as we we were uh, you know constantly in touch with with the big object team, and we are working along with them. That's what you said, the Salesforce aligned and being part of this data recovery team, and uh, which is actually the backed by the big object. So Salesforce Shield, which is the native encryption solution, which does not support by the big object yet, and I'm I'm not sure whether other cloud or other uh, in encryption players they support or not. But being said that data recovery does support because. Uh, uh, we do have another application called Encryptic, uh, which does support that native encryption uh, in the big object as well. Very interesting to know that, Priya. Uh, guys, if uh, you all have any questions, we will now be taking some questions. Uh, please feel free to let us know. We've got another four minutes to go. Yeah, I can take one question from here and uh, they're asking for, okay, big object is the replacement for the, uh, you know, data storage, but how about the file storage? So, yeah, that's a good question. So, what I want to uh, tell you that, of course, a big object is the replacement for the actual data storage. Now, the file storage, uh, it's not being, uh, you know, like uh, it can be utilized if you're really looking for your file storage size is more and you are looking for any archiving solution of file storage. Data Archive application comes with another application called X-Files Pro, which is available in enterprise version and you know, and that would help you to archive your files uh, even in externally also, if you're looking for Amazon or Google Drive or anywhere in your in un unpremise, uh, you know, and any storage also that it supports that. That's so interesting to know that Priya, because you know, so far there wasn't something which was available so easily. And uh, Priya, there is another question that I'm, I'm getting is that, you know, uh, from the perspective of data archiving, how uh, easy is it to retrieve data back? You know, it's a, if I talk about uh, you know, Salesforce by default to support the synchronous and asynchronous way of querying the data and putting into that one, but that required a little bit of advanced developer stuff and you can go to Workbench also, you can try that out. But being said that a data archiver does automatically taken care, as I said, the, all those pain seeking jobs. Now it has been one click, one click where business would have no clue that where the data coming from. But actually that system is making sure that it's like a so smooth and, uh, you know, like so easy, the data would be coming from big object, but it being represented as if that it is still inside your primary data stories, right? And with the same layout, with the lightning or classic. Wow, we're getting a lot of questions, Priya. I would love to take a few of them before we wind up for the day. So, you know, there's another very interesting question I see. How many levels of relationship data archiver supports? Uh, that's a good one. So now, you know, like it, it has the capability to support any type of relationship or any level of relationship, but we do have like different uh, options of this one. Please go to the website datarchiver.com and try to understand, but it has the capacity to understand uh, auto detect uh, right auto detect that what relationship it has because as i talk about data archiva or archiving it's all about cut paste so as you know salesforce has a parent detail relationship a lookup relationship and parent data get deleted child data get deleted if a child data get deleted if a grandchild data is not been taken care then that data is going to be lost for you and no business is going to allow for that one Absolutely. so being that one the data archiver takes care of any level relationship making sure that uh, all the child grandchild and grand grandchild's records are being taken care Absolutely. I, I, I take another question from Madhu and she's asking.